All right, so this is part four of the resurrection of a 2011 GTV 300. Uh, I've noticed the, mo the water pump's a little noisy. I kind of checked it out. I did pull the snail, as I like to call it, the, the um, water pump cover off, and I gave it the little wiggle check to see if there's some play in there, and I definitely see some play. The water pump should not go side to side. Um, so we need to overhaul that. I can tell because I can hear the noise out of the motor. Um, I have the oil drain, obviously the coolant drain. It is possible to do this whole job while the motor's in, but it's obviously so much easier if the motor's out. Um, go ahead and remove the water pump impeller. And typically you want to go reverse thread on it. There is some springiness because there's a, um, a a spring dampener that attaches it to the flywheel, but I went clockwise and that's how you loosen the, the impeller. If the impeller is deformed in any way, um, you definitely would want to service that. But check this out. You do not want a water pump that looks like a little mini joystick where you can move it side to side. Uh, ironically, it wasn't leaking. You know, oftentimes you'll overhaul a water pump because it's leaking. It's where it leaks the coolant is out of this little bleed hole here. And that prevents the coolant from contaminating the engine oil. I've seen customers actually find the leak. They'll put silicone sealant into these uh, bleed holes. There's actually one here, and there's also one at the very bottom. They'll plug those, and then they end up ruining the motor. It looks like you have milkshake in the motor because the leaking coolant from your water pump seal is leaking into the motor. So that is not how you fix a leaking water pump by plugging those weep holes that are located in the bottom of the water pump cover. Uh, we're also going to need to replace the outer gasket here. I'll show all the parts that were needed to do the whole job successfully. Um, but first of all, we got to remove this whole entire cover. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, we do have the connections for both the, the stator, that's what charges the scooter, and also the oil pressure sensor and the crank position sensor are through this connector. Um, oftentimes in the workshop, we'll leave this connected and we're able to move this out to the side enough and it gives us enough clearance to service the water pump. Um, especially on those newer models where you gotta remove the complete floorboard to gain access to these connectors. Uh, this is the 2011, so you can access the connectors right from under. And if you look at the first part of this video, me pulling the motor, I show how to do it. So there's, you're gonna need an eight millimeter um, socket or eight millimeter T-handle and just go to town on all the various fasteners all the way around and just keep track. Some of them have brackets for wiring or hoses. So I uh, don't need to remove that wiring uh, clamp. I'm just going all the way around removing all the fasteners and don't forget the one on the bottom. And at this point we'll go ahead and remove them one by one and just keep the clamp with it. You're gonna end up with some longer screws. They're so much longer that they won't go into the shorter spots, so you can't really mix them up. Bracket the hose, the connector for the oxygen sensor on the exhaust. And then you got the fastener at the seven o'clock position. It is my last one here. And the long one, right at the five o'clock position. You can see the only long screw that's part of the water pump cover. So just like your belt cover, this uh, cover is doweled and there's also some tabs to give it a couple nice little wax. You're probably gonna have some leakage of fluid as you remove it. And as you pull this off, you're gonna find that you need to disconnect this connector here. You pull the rubber boot off and it pulls right off the, the sensor. That's the oil pressure sensor right there. And then you just gotta rock this off. There's um, a little bit of uh, resistance. That's the magnets pulling the flywheel. And now we've separated the water pump cover. There's one part you do not wanna lose track of and it's gonna be this spring drive that engages. And oftentimes if things are poor assembled incorrectly, you'll end up completely damaging this part. So keep track of that the whole, during the whole complete job. 
Uh, you're going to want to remove the gasket. You can see this is an old gasket, so it kind of wants to crumb, you know, come off in little pieces. Uh, the best way to remove a gasket that's stubborn, where you have remnants of it, is you can get a straight edge uh, razor, razor blade and just carefully scrape it without scraping the aluminum. Just enough to scrape the gasket away and, and get most of this off by hand. We'll go back in there and, and dress the, the gasket surface of this case. Because if you leave any remnants on there, you're going to end up with a leak and that's no good. Uh, for the most part, it came off good. I just have some uh, residual gasket here and a little bit back here. So you can scrape the gasket. I wouldn't be too concerned if you get a small amount of gasket into the engine case. Not the end of the world. These motors have a very nice strainer and oil filter that would catch the items. And just get any of those little remnants out. Look around. And you should be good. If it's just a little discoloration, I won't worry about it. Last thing you want to be doing is gouging the aluminum. So the same goes with the cover itself. And if you're doing this at home, you may just want to consider replacing this whole entire cover. Uh, we do hover a rebuild service. I rebuild several of these, you know, every month probably. People mail to them to us. It's definitely a little cheaper to rebuild them. Uh, but this casting is not all expensive with a brand new water pump in it. Uh, the one thing you got to keep in mind, there's several variations of this cover. Uh, the water pump is pretty much the same from 250 and 300. It never changed anything in the center. But a lot of stuff on how the stator mounts and other parts of it have changed over the years. So it's very specific to the VIN number of your scooter when you're replacing a, a complete um, pretty much water pump or alternator casting with a brand new water pump in it. But we're going to go ahead and rebuild this one. I'm going to show how to do that. Uh, it's definitely not a do-it-yourself kind of friendly job to rebuild these water pumps. Uh, so keep in mind if you're looking to do it, look at the mail order services on our scooterwest.com website and it kind of outlines the procedures to mail us a water pump if you want um, our techs to do it for you and do, do it with the professional tools. And typically I'll do it, we'll do it all in a hydraulic press. I'm going to try to do the whole job with just punches and basic sockets um, and one tool that kind of lines everything up. So uh, we're going to want to get this uh, stator plate out of the way and also this pickup. So I got Phillips drive and I got five millimeter fasteners. So the pickup, sometimes these are very tight. You don't want to really strip them. If you're going to struggle with a hand driver, you may want to move over to a, a impact to get those off. So you could either use a hand impact or you could use a, a drive. And make sure you have a ton of pressure on these if you're going to use Get those out of the way. One thing about that pickup is it does have some magnetic force to it. That's the uh, crank position sensor pickup. And I have everything pretty clean. I'll be able to clean it more in a parts washer. You can see there's a little bit of grime on it. Get that perfectly clean once these electronic components are out of here. You pretty much would be doing the same job if your scooter wasn't charging and the stator was out. But I can tell you, test these. Um, GTS stators are, are immensely reliable. Uh, most motorcycles, it's a very weak point, is the stator. I've had a lot of motorcycles over the years where I've replaced the stators or even other scooters like Yamaha Vino 125s, they eat up stators. You know, you have the scooter stop charging. The air-cooled um, 150s, those uh, stators don't last as long. The Primavera and Sprint ones have been 100% reliable. Maybe one we replaced. Those have been out for quite a long time now, seven years. So this uh, grommet right here is what, what's going on right here is they do put silicone sealant that uh, traps these two rubber grommets that allow the wiring to pass through. And this is a common point where it leaks. So we'll clean that out the best we can and we'll put new silicone sealant in there. Another thing you want to remove, this is plastic. That's your uh, timing inspection hole. You're going to need a very large Torx driver. So you're going to need a very large Torx driver. This is a T55. It's something you probably use more on cars. And the plug is not in there all that tight because it is plastic. Go ahead and remove that. 
Uh, it does have an O-ring on there, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove that O-ring, and that's a common spot where they might start leaking over time, because the O-ring is uh, collapsed, just like what you find on the valve covers over time. People always wonder, why do gaskets leak? You know, I've, I've kind of come to the conclusion there's two reasons why they leak. Um, just from heat cycles, you know, over wear and tear of use and the rubber and, and papers that they're made of deteriorate from the age. So you have a 10 year old vehicle, you'll start having small leaks. Um, sometimes installation errors when they're installed, I'm, even from the factory, I have fairly new bikes that may have a leak and maybe the seal wasn't installed correctly. And the last thing, which I would call like a rot, you know, air of the, the end user, is people do that, that don't properly warm up their scooter. I'm not talking letting it idle for 15 minutes before getting on it. These are people that will start their scooter and immediately full throttle it. And in that situation, you're expanding and contracting all the metals at such a high rate, you know, higher rate than normal. And it puts a lot of strain on all your gaskets. So you end up with a leaky base and head gaskets much sooner. So we're gonna take a heat gun or even a torch if you wanna do it quicker or a hot plate. I've done this several times with a hot plate. And heat up the casting. We don't need to heat it all that much to remove them. We're not burning, just heating up the aluminum is all I'm doing. Mainly this core of the, um, of the water pump. And with it warmed up a little bit, I mean, it's pretty warm, but I can still touch it. Um, have it on a flat surface. You know, it could be on wood, would probably be even a better. And I'm taking a deep eight millimeter socket, not an impact style. And you send the entire water pump shaft all the way through. Flip that over and look at that bearing. That bearing is completely trashed. Uh, two ways to go about this, this is an oil seal. You could buy this whole shaft with the bearings and everything. Um, or it is possible to press two new bearings on there. And if you look inside this cavity, you can see all the grunge in there. We're gonna go ahead and knock that water pump seal out, which was remarkably not leaking yet. Usually a telltale for a, um, a bad water pump is a uh, leaking leaking water typically so so we're gonna go ahead and take a 14 millimeter socket we're gonna get all this grunge out of here there's parts of the old seal that are still stuck in there we're gonna clean this all up that's all parts of your old bearing um, take a 14 or 15 millimeter socket and we could dry the water pump seal out and I have this supported with wooden blocks And there's our water pump seal separated. And at this point, we're gonna go over to a parts washer and clean this all up. So oftentimes I just rebuild this shaft. Uh, this shaft is in really poor condition. I'm not gonna deal with it. You can get the bearings, I have them, 63.8 RS, and it's pretty expensive bearings to rebuild that, but there's better ways to go about it. So normally you need the bearings, you'll need the oil seal, which is a 842.455, and you'll need the water pump steel, the ceramic water pump steel, 844352. But there's another way to go about with uh, a nice high quality kit that we have, and that's 842565 kit. And the nice thing is it includes a brand new shaft that has the, um, the water pump or a complete water pump cover. This is specifically one for a GT200. There's several different variations for the 250 and 300 motor. So make sure you call with your VIN number if you want to order a complete replacement water pump. So in the kit, you get another one of those spring drives that sometimes can be damaged. You get the water pump O-ring. You get a brand new shaft with the bearings. Uh, this, this part does have to be tapped back on. You get the oil seal, the water pump impeller, and also get the water pump seal itself. So we're gonna go ahead and tap this onto this shaft here. I put a little grease on there, uh, it's steel against steel. Um, I'm not sure why they don't put that, this together, but you could pretty much take your eight millimeter socket, preferably one that you're not 
don't care about too much. So you want to go ahead and tap the shaft onto that steel drive. And I'm using an eight millimeter socket. And just go ahead and tap it all the way home. Make sure it's all the way closed up and looks like the original water pump, you know, obviously with the good uh, bearings on there. Next, we're gonna go ahead and install the shaft into the water pump. So we have our cleaned up case. We're gonna have a couple pieces of wood set up supporting this whole entire pl place. Uh, this little shaft will actually protrude through. You're gonna need a 21 millimeter socket that's enough to push on the outer races of these bearings and also will drop down into the, um, the cavity here. So next you're gonna to need to heat this up and it's gotta be a lot hotter, like enough to boil water. We probably got it hot enough. Put a little bit of grease on the bearings. You could freeze the bearings. It doesn't really help all that much with these, uh, this setup. And go ahead and get that centered. And, and tap it all the way home. And obviously the more heat you have, the easier the bearings will go in. Those went in pretty easy. Not really much of an issue there. Um, we're not gonna put the oil seal in just yet. Everything's still pretty hot, so keep that in mind. Uh, still wanna use this socket. The socket's uh, high enough to support the whole entire uh, assembly from the backside. And again, normally in my workshop, I do this on a press, but I just wanna show you with more basic tools how to do job and how you could do it successfully. So I'm gonna go ahead and rest the water pump on that socket there. And you may wanna have something else to help support it, keep it from rolling over. Everything's still really hot, I could barely touch it. Uh, we're gonna take the water pump seal. This is the tricky part. You're not gonna have very much success putting one of these water pump seals in unless you have a factory style tool. This is a step tool that sets the clearances of the ceramic seal. You could just carefully go between tapping this outer ring in and also the inner ring in. Um, you're probably not gonna have success. So oftentimes if you're just looking at the easy way out, just spend the money and buy the whole cover or just send us the water pump. Uh, don't need to really put any grease on this, um, but pretty much just support the whole assembly and we'll go ahead and tap that until it's... And once it changes note and the uh, seals like um, against the inner thing, the um, inner flange in there, you're, you're pretty much set. So at this point, we just need to put the oil seal in. Wanna grease this up, both the inner and outer lip. And again, that same socket will come in handy, the 21 millimeter socket if you need to push the seal in. Uh, oftentimes you just do it by finger. You gotta push it a little further down. You know, typically it goes, I would say about a millimeter and a half down. And you pretty much got the seal in there. So it's pretty set up. And the last thing we're gonna do is uh, just thread the impeller on and we'll tighten it you gotta remember to tighten this when we put it all back together. So we got a brand new impeller. And when it turns, that's normal. It has some friction, especially with those brand new seals. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this O-ring part number 479986 on this inspection plug before I um, reinstall it. And again, I got that huge so you just roll the O-ring onto that plug. Got this set up here. And you can just feel the O-ring. You don't need to tighten that all that tight. So water pump's all built. Uh, the wood still comes in handy for supporting the whole assembly as we're working on it. We're gonna go ahead and put the, um, the stator plate back in. You wanna have some silicon sealant handy because we're gonna reseal these wires and we clean this out. You could leave the old silicon behind. It's not gonna hurt anything. Just pack some new silicon in there. You could even scrape out the old stuff. If 
you wanted to go through the extra effort, you know, oftentimes you just scrape it out, and spend a little bit of time getting it all out. But it's not going to hurt anything if you put more on top of it. So go ahead and put some new silicone in there. You could get a little bit more than what you think and it will just ooze out. There's, it's not really going to get into any of the oil passages. So everything kind of lines up. So it was all in there before. So you have these pair of grommets that seal the wires and they just get planted right into that silicone and I just smear whatever excess right over the top. No problems there. Then you got the three fasteners to hold the stator. You could put Loctite on these. Originally they don't have Loctite, but if you torque them to the correct torque, which would be about seven and a half foot pounds, you're not going to have any issues. I'm going to go ahead and set the pickup and these you want to reinstall fairly tight. This is an earlier style one. I can just tell how the, the arrangement. So once you have this tight, it's time to reinstall this water pump cover onto the engine. So we, before we put the water pump cover on, very important you put this drive clip in because if you don't have it in there, it doesn't matter which way it goes. If it's uh, bad, there's no back or front of it. Uh, your water pump's not gonna drive, but the motor's gonna run just fine. So next we're gonna go ahead and turn this clockwise and see how this is, this uh, spring metal is kind of straight, is what I like to do is use this as a reference. This is your starter intermediate gear and the center punch right in there. I have this point straight at the, um, so I look right at it and it's pointing straight at this intermediate gear shaft. So that's a good reference to set it up. And next you want to uh, get a brand new factory gasket 840504. Some of the older ones use different part numbers for this gasket, um, but that's the vast majority of them use this gasket. I go ahead and set the gasket onto the dowels. The dowels are integrated into the engine case. And now at this point, we'll grab our stator. Make sure you don't have this wire get trapped in between it. And the same thing, this little, little impeller right here. We'll line that up so it looks like it's pointing straight at this boss where the uh, intermediate shaft goes. Uh, we know this gasket surface is all clean. And be prepared to keep your fingers out of the way because the magnets in that, uh, the, the flywheel are very strong and they'll pull the stator right into the, um, just like that. So sometimes it will want to go crooked. Go ahead and pull it away and, and you can see it seats up and right now that's loose but it kind of feels normal it has a little bit of play and that's normal for that um, gear start with this long screw because it's the only one that's unique we have our um, our our uh, o2 sensor wiring harness and we have the clamp for the um, the wiring and the rest of the screws are all the same. And usually I like putting the dirty screws where you don't see them and the pretty screws where you do see them, but they're all the same. And if you want to get a torque wrench out, about seven and a half foot pounds and you want to kind of evenly torque them and we'll get, get to this wire a little bit later. And you see that clip, it kind of wants to drop down. I put a zip tie on that water pump uh, cover right there just to make it a little easier so it's out of my way not fighting it but the hoses are all intact the clamps are just fine that water pump cover is the original one it looks almost new after cleaning it and at this point we'll do the final torque so with a, a tool like this just a good twist with your wrist is about the correct torque for these and very even you're doing about the same twisting on each of these fasteners here. Let's make sure you get them all. And I'm kind of doing them diagonal. And if you hit one again, you're just like, you could feel that it's all the way tight. And I think that was, you can just go all the way around. See, I didn't get that one. Just make sure they're all tight with a twist of the wrist here. 
All right. Now we got our, um, this wire goes through this little clamp here, but we do have this oil pressure sensor and the wire kind of just snakes along the engine and you could get it on this side of the, 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 the O2 sensor bracket, wiring bracket, then push the rubber boot. Sometimes those oil sensors are starting to leak. If the terminal's all oily, I would have replaced that sensor as well. So this uh, water pump impeller, you turn it counterclockwise and it only needs a little twist. It's not gonna come off, it stays, stays put pretty good. And that's the normal, it should have a little free play like that. If it's all bound up and really difficult to turn, minus the friction of the seals, you know something's bound up in this little spring right here. Next, we'll go ahead and put the water pump snail on. I'll cut my zip tie, uh, clean it all in there. That's this perfect time to do that. Um, you can take the O-ring. Sometimes the O-rings are round. Sometimes they are, uh, just do it wide, it's still folded back. And sometimes they're shaped like the water pumps now. I've seen both ways, they both work just fine. Um, oftentimes they do not want to stay put, like this one. And the way around that's just a small amount of grease all around in the groove, and it will just hold the O-ring in place. It's not gonna really affect anything or uh, contaminate the water of any sort. So just go all the way around, try not to get too much into the this is that uh, the Maxima grease that's very, very tacky. It works very good for uh, most uh, scooter greasing needs, nonetheless to say. Uh, part, scooter West part number is grease. So pretty much get that O-ring in there and it's staying put, whether it's the round one or the one that's shaped. I find they're about equal on installation. So go ahead and line up the, the holes. And try not to shift it around too much because if you could potentially roll the O-ring of uh, that water pump cover out. Any of these screws are in questionable condition, perfect time to change them out. And just go ahead and go around, hand tight all these, fairly tight. And that's as far as you need to go. One last thing I'm going to address while we're here. If you look at this uh, water pump outlet, if this was in much worse shape, I'd just replace this whole entire cover. But there is some corrosion. And you could kind of scrape it off with a knife all the way around. You could use sandpaper or even a wire brush to get that debris off. So the last little thing, I noticed there's a little corrosion on this um, inlet, you know, aluminum casting. The outlet is going to be plastic, so there's no corrosion. I'm going to go ahead and replace the thermostat and thermostat housing because these are prone to leaking over time, especially when they're over 10 years old. But this, uh, the easy way to get all that corrosion off is just with a small bit of emery cloth. Or you can use a wire, wire brush. Um, there's several ways. You just want to have it cleaned up because the hose is going to more readily seal up to the um, thing. I didn't find that the hoses were in such bad condition. They need to be replaced on the scooter. Uh, they still have quite a bit of, you know, I'd say another 15 years of service life in them. And just clean it up. And get most of the corrosion off and it looks almost as good as new. So I promise the last thing I'd be doing on overhauling a cooling system, just in interest, this, this wasn't leaking when I did have the scooter running, but there, it's a good idea just to start with a brand new thermostat and a new thermostat housing. These do wear out over time being plastic. You need a T25 Torx driver and just go ahead and break the two screws free. And there's essentially two variations or three variations of the covers, depending on if you have a GT200, the 250 and 300 all the way up to 2019 or the 2020. Uh, all different, there are, none of them are interchangeable. So keep in mind there's various different thermostat outlets. They all use the same thermostat, a little bit of coolant in there. So that just pulls right away. Then the thermostat includes a new gasket. And I don't even find there's even worth the effort to test a, a thermostat. The next thing you want to take a look at is the O-ring. There's two different variations of this O-ring that seals the, the, um, the bleed screw. 
So shortly after this motor was engineered, they went to a larger size. So sometime in 2011, they went to this larger ceiling ring that just is less prone to leaking. That part number is 878906, and that was pretty much used mid or late 2011 and on. Early 2011 and prior used a smaller O-ring, and that's 845604. Well, guess what? This scooter uses a smaller O-ring. And you can go ahead and pry that out of the head with a knife or a pick. So we'll go ahead and set the O-ring in, and all you do is just put it right in that little well, and it will just stay in place. Next, we're gonna go ahead and replace the thermostat. That includes the gasket. 82831R is the part number for this. And it's really 82831R5, but we do not add the five. The five means there's an update to the part, and this is the most updated part. Uh, just set that in there. With all new stuff, I wouldn't bother putting any grease or sealant on it. If you're reusing your old one, you could certainly put some sealant on it. Uh, the, the most common thermostat housing for the 250s and most 300s, the BB350, is 845604. And again, that's been updated to a B018147. And you're getting the latest part if you're ordering it from Scooter West. So it uh, comes with a new rubber cap. You can put that on. Um, you just go ahead and carefully set this in place. Don't try not to move it around too much and go ahead and replace the two screws. And they have a little bit of rest on top. They're not gonna affect anything. These are just clamping down this. The nice thing is that uh, the plastic housing does have steel inserts, so you don't have the risk of cracking the, um, this outlet or, yeah, water pump outlet here by over tightening these screws. But So the reason you'd replace this cover is they just, a plastic, you know, it's a fiberglass re reinforced nylon part, but just heat cycles kind of uh, fatigue it and warp it. It is possible to resurface it, and they also tend to start leaking from this bleed screw. Why do you want to take any risk with coolant leaks? I mean, that could be detrimental to the motor. So just go back and forth, and you got that all replaced. So I would consider this cooling system completely refurbished. The radiators have a very long life as long as they don't have rust running through them. Same with the hoses. I've found that the hoses give a very long service life on the Vespas as long as they're not cut through from rubbing on something and easily get 25 years out of the hoses and radiators. So thanks for watching part four of my resurrection video on the 2011 GTV 300. Uh, look out for the next video. We'll go ahead and overhaul the transmission, refill the fluids, and after that, we'll get the motor back in the scooter. So we'll get new air filter in there, um, and it's going to run like a gem. I'll probably put a new rear tire on it as well and show you some other stuff we'll clean up. And then the last parts, we'll be doing some cosmetic restoration of the scooter. Thanks again for watching. It's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. For all things Vespa, check us out on the web, scooterwest.com. We got the parts in stock, ready to ship. Not too many other people can say that here in North America for both modern and vintage Vespas. And if you're new to the channel and just exploring Vespas, whether repairing them, researching them, uh, understanding them, whether it's vintage or modern, of course, just type Vespa Motorsport in the YouTube search and it takes you right to our Vespa Motorsport YouTube homepage, and there's a search right there on a PC. I know on a uh, phone it's a little different. You could type in any subject, how to change a battery, or you can research a BV350, or how to start a vintage Vespa, for instance. So I probably have a video out there, and I'll keep on making them. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next one.